best part of camping is all of the outdoor cooking. I love cooking over an open fire. These are some of my favorite ways to do it. I'd love to know what yours are. Share them with me in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to this channel for more camping tips. Cowboy coffee often gets a bad rap for being too strong or bitter, but if you follow these steps, you'll be able to rival what you brew at home. All you need is a small pot, some water, and some coffee. The first and most important step is to boil your water. I like to use two tablespoons of coffee for every eight ounces of water, so keep in mind the volume of water you use. Once your water comes to a boil, remove the pot from the fire and allow it to sit for 30 seconds. This will lower the water temperature to about 200 degrees, the perfect temperature for brewing. Now add your coffee, stirring the grounds into the water. Let the brew sit for two minutes and stir again. Then let the coffee sit for two minutes more and your java is ready. Before serving, sprinkle on a little cold water to help the floating grinds settle to the bottom. Then slowly pour the coffee so the grounds remain on the bottom of the pot. If you find your coffee is a little too strong to your liking, try adding eggshells. Eggshells are alkaline, meaning they can reduce the acidity in the coffee. Simply add the cracked and washed eggshells into your pot when you add the coffee. Allow the eggshells to remain in the pot during brewing and pouring. There's nothing like coffee by the campfire. Do you make coffee while camping? How do you make it? I'd love to hear in the comment section below. Be sure to like this post and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more modern pioneering videos. Fresh baked campfire bread. Let me show you how. One of my favorite things about camping is how being in the woods inspires me to use my imagination. When all you've got to work with is what you're willing to carry, you end up making tools out of the most unlikely objects. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make bread out of a beer can oven. Using a sharp knife or a cutting tool, cut the tops and bottoms off of four empty beer cans. Next, cut a straight line vertically down the cans and flatten them into rectangular sheets. Use three of the sheets of the aluminum to create oven sides. It will end up looking like an open-sided box. The final sheet will form the top. Place your proof loaf into a skillet and into the oven. Now, you can also take some bricks or some rocks and set them on the fire to create an even surface for your oven. Lastly, place your oven sides so that they enclose the side facing away from the fire to reflect the heat. So as you can see, I've got the sides up and now I'm adding the lid with a few rocks to weigh it down. And now this side is open and it's gonna reflect the heat. Watch as your bread bakes, turning it if necessary to bake evenly. Since this isn't your home oven, you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on it to make sure things go according to plan. Believe me, a little fresh baked bread with your rabbit stew or morning coffee is totally worth it. For more deliciousness like this, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's be honest, one of the main reasons we all go camping is the s'mores. But instead of making individual s'mores, why not try making one large skillet dip? S'mores are actually quite a simple dessert to make, which is why they're so easy to make while you're outside camping. Chocolate, graham crackers, and marshmallows are all you need to make this classic indulgence. It's really simple. All you do is take four chocolate bars and break them up into the bottom of a cast iron skillet. And on top of that, you just layer marshmallows. Now, if you really want to mix it up, you could use Reese's, which is a little bit of a peanut chocolate flavor. You can do half and half, so you have something for everyone. Grab your lid, and now let's place it on the fire. Now you're gonna place it over the fire and cover it with a lid, but away from the direct flames. You just want a low, slow heat. It's kind of trial and error learning to cook something like this over a campfire, but with only 10 minutes of gentle heat, you should be able to melt everything just fine. Just be sure not to leave it on so long or close to the heat that the chocolate burns. If you prefer your marshmallows more toasted, you can hold a piece of burning firewood a few inches from the marshmallows to help them turn brown. Serve when thoroughly melted with plenty of graham crackers for dipping. Enjoy! 
the perfect campfire treat. What's your favorite campfire dessert? Let me know in the comments. And for more modern pioneering recipes like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now it's time for some campsite cleanup. I've got my dirty skillet from my s'mores dip. If you haven't checked out that recipe, be sure to. Now I'm gonna clean this, and I realized this morning while drinking my coffee that my coffee grinds would be perfect for scrubbing down this skillet. Coffee grinds are acidic, so what's so great about them is they serve as an abrasive while also getting off all the dirt. So I'm gonna drop those in. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Just a couple tablespoons. And then I've got a good scrub brush, and I'm just gonna scrub around and get all that dirt off. Be sure to get the sides, especially, all that bacon grease. And once you've given it a good scrub, set it over the campfire and let all that water evaporate. Now I've dumped out all the water and I'm gonna set my skillet over the fire to let all of that moisture evaporate. Once it's fully dry, I'm gonna take it off the heat and let it cool. And I've got a clean cast iron skillet. Wanna see more videos like this? Like this post and subscribe to my channel.